If you're looking to resaw something, using a fence can be very problematic. Something that has been used for many, many years, decades, is a single point bandsaw sled. And basically what that does is it gives you one single point that allows you to pivot your work so that you can cut as you resaw. What's really nice about this is that it allows the stock to open up so you're not wearing your blade down. Fences are really bad about damaging the teeth in the long run. So this is a really good solution. Anyway, let me show you how I came up with this. I think that mine's a little bit more unique than some of the other ones out there because I use a metal tube here, but this really is a good option because it's so simple to do and it's really cheap. I've got all my materials here. They'll all be on the website in the materials list. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to map out our stock. With my nine inch by 10 inch piece, we'll go ahead and draw this out. I'll use my marking gauge and I'm gonna set it for two and a quarter inches. Put a line here as well as on the other side. Now I'll move this into two and a half inches and I'm gonna draw a second line. And these are the grooves that will lock everything down to the table. They need to be a quarter of an inch in thickness. Now I'll set my marking gauge for four and three fourths. I'll go ahead and mark the top here. And this is where our point's gonna to come together. Now I'll set this for four and a half inches. And I'll go ahead and mark on the side over here, on both sides. Now I'll connect my diagonals and draw another line. But before we go on, let's mark these at five inches. This is where the grooves will obviously stop. Now with my nine inch piece that's three and five sixteenths inch wide, I'm gonna come into the top here and I want to measure in an inch. So I'll come over here and we'll go one inch. Without changing this, I'm gonna go down here. That'll be one inch from the bottom. Now I'll go ahead and connect my marks again. And now I wanna do a half lap joint over here. So I'm gonna measure over three inches and then I'll measure to three and a half inches. And I need to make this three quarters of an inch, so I've marked it there. Now this piece is mapped out. Because we wanna cut a half lap on this piece as well, I'm gonna set this to three and three fourths. Then we'll go four and a quarter inches over, and that's where we'll cut our joint out. And again, I want to cut this at three quarters of an inch, which will go with the other piece. I did use pencil and pencil is a terrible thing to, to use when you're making joints. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both boards and I'm gonna line up one side so that's on the pencil and then I'm going to use a Kiridashi knife. I'm gonna do the same thing with my other piece here. And now I know from the edge of the pencil here to that line on both pieces, that's where I need to cut. Now that I've cut this out, I want to cut the corners off of each side. I made my marks, but I really want this to clamp onto the front of this. So I'm gonna go in a little bit on both sides, but I really want this to squeeze on so this doesn't move around. That looks pretty good, and I might just end up cutting a little bit off and then using a grinding pad to get it closer to the right size. Now I've not cut this to size yet because I wanna put this in my clamp and I don't want to squeeze the part that I'm gonna be cutting out. Now I'm just gonna hammer this on. It's a pretty tight fit. I've got the wall here as close as I can to the back of the steel tubing. 
I am cutting a little bit of a channel, but it's all right because it'll hopefully keep it on a little bit better. If I look at this, it looks like I'm pretty parallel. Later on when I go to put this all together, I'll check to see if it's parallel. It obviously has to be parallel to the blade for it to work. Now that this is cut out, I'm gonna take my sliding T-bar and I'm gonna find the approximate center. It's really not critical that we get the exact center, but somewhere in the middle there. With this drawn, we'll go ahead and set this underneath the body and I'll take each bolt and I'm gonna find the center and just hammer it. And I'll add a mark to the center like that. Since we're using a flat machine screw, we want to drill and add that cone shape into each one of these holes. And these are quarter inch, so we will be adding a quarter inch drill bit. I said earlier that I want to attach this to my base before I cut it out, but because of the tubing here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little ways down on both corners here so that I don't cut into it later on, obviously. Now to attach this, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna put this as far forward as I can. I don't want any of the base to be touching anything that I cut. I want the tube to stick out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna balance it on both sides of these lines. Now I'll take a pencil. I'm just gonna draw lines on both sides on both of those braces as well as along the body. Now when I take this off, you can see this cross that I've made. I'll go ahead and add some pilot holes and then we'll attach this, cut the rest of it out and we'll be done. Now I'm gonna cheat again by using a little bit of super glue. This is the Loctite, so it really only takes a second for it to, or 10 seconds for it to harden. So I'll go ahead and press this on, lining up all those lines. And it really only takes like 20 seconds. No activator, it's great stuff. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over, drill these out and add my screws. And these did just barely make it. <laughs> I was afraid that they wouldn't, but it looks like the inch made it right to the end. You might want to switch to three quarter inch. Okay, in case I didn't explain it well before, I'm gonna show you what I did. I've got my expansion bar here and you can see I've only cut one of these. It really only needs one of these to really lock this in place. But the second one obviously is to keep the jig from moving around. I'm gonna use my own knob here, but you might find that whatever knob you use, if you choose to make your own, that it spins around inside of this instead of being pulled up into the wood, which is supposed to expand in the slot. That is a real problem and for some reason I'm having that problem with this knob. So I'm gonna show you an alternative that you can do to make this a little bit better to, in a situation like this. I've got my Phillips bolt here and I'm gonna cut through one of the edges here. Now if you have a flat screwdriver top, then you're far better than I am right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut on this. I've got a small cotter pin here that should fit in the head of this, like that. That's exactly what I'm looking for. We'll cut the one side off, but before we do that, we're going to add a little bit of hot glue. Now you could use epoxy, but hot glue will work just as well. This isn't going to move around a whole lot. It just needs to be able to be held in place so that when the top is screwed in, obviously this doesn't move around. And I'm just gonna add a little bit to the top that's really all I need to do. Now I'll clip the top. So let's take it back over to the bandsaw. 
Now you can see that this just slides right in place. It needs to be inside the groove, but there we go. That will tighten and not have any problems now. And that is pretty tight in there. And that is really locked in place. I don't have to worry about that moving. The next thing that you really need to worry about is that this is perpendicular to the table. We want a perfect 90 degrees. I found out that this is off just a little bit, so this was pointed out just a, a hair this way. And by using the hammer, I was able to pound it in just enough that it does now look like it is perfectly parallel. But you also wanna make sure that whatever you use to hit the end of this, you're gonna to wanna to use something that's rubber, not steel, because you don't want to dent this or leave any marks on it. You want this to be nice and smooth. If you did find that one side was a little bit farther out than the other, go to the side that's in farther and you can add a screw to the side and just screw that in a little bit and that should pop it out just a hair. If yours is not tight enough, you can always add a little bit of epoxy on the side which will keep it locked in place. This can be frustrating to get the cut started. It's frustrating to find out exactly where this will go. So my recommendation is to go ahead and start the cut and go in just a little bit and stop. At this point, I can move this forward and have it touching my stock. And I'd like to put this in front of the blade a little bit. So about right like that, and I can lock this in place. But that has me right up against the tube and it has me on the line. Anyway, this was a fun little build. Let me know in the description if this is something that you might make yourself in the future. I've explained this right. Uh, or if you have any questions, please let me know. You can contact me by email. It's on the webpage. So leave me an email if you have any problems. Again, the webpage will be in the description down below. Mm -hmm.